This is Nine News Now. Could renting be the smartest option these days in light of the state of the housing market? And what should you do if you're facing the possibility of foreclosure? With us now to weigh in is Catherine Dickerson. She's an attorney from Smolin Plevy. Uh, Catherine, you were telling me you did get a pretty interesting phone call this morning. Why don't you recount what, what you got? Well, a lady called. She was married, and her husband is on his second year of cancer treatment. And unfortunately, while he's getting Social Security benefits because he's disabled, this lady has to take off a day every single time he has to go into treatment. That's been two years. She's used up all of her leave time, all of the leave time that may be available to her under the Family Medical Leave Act, and she's wondering if there's any way she can be compensated for this time off. And the answer is... Well, apparently not through the Social Security Administration. She's not disabled, and unfortunately, we have certain plans in place, like family leave, but after two years... Well, and you know, I, the reason why I asked you to tell that story is because it, there are so many people who are squeezed in so many different ways, and all of a sudden they find themselves out there on the edge. And that's why when we hear this, this story earlier in our broadcast that somebody's going to be this white knight and come in and help you, you're thinking, wow, this is great, and of course, it's a scam. If somebody is in a bind and they're facing foreclosure, what are the recommendations you give them? Catherine, it's basically swimming in quicksand, isn't it? I mean, it is, and it becomes even more complicated when you have two people who are living together in a home or have purchased a home together who are not married or where one person has purchased the home and the mortgage is in their name alone and the other person decides to walk. It's that person alone who takes the hit on their credit. Well, Catherine, you know, we're still looking at a market that's, that's uh, I would say, troubled in many respects. Um, is it a better idea at this point in time, if, you, if you've stored away the money and you want to buy a house, uh, has it leveled off to the degree you think you should jump in, or is it a better idea just to rent until things kind of stabilize? I think it depends on the person and the market that they're looking at specifically. If they are able to carry the mortgage and it's something they can do financially responsibly and buy themselves without help from anyone else, then that's certainly something that they should consider. However, if they're speculating, this is not a good time to speculate. All right. We'll leave it there. Thanks so much for uh, talking to us. Back to our Mind Over Money segment. Homeowners across the country are feeling squeezed. But there's one group that's feeling the pinch more than others. Attorney Catherine Dickerson is back now to explain. Catherine, you were talking just a little while ago about the problems that people who aren't married and living together are having. And that's the group, the particular group we're talking about that's being hit now by the subprime crisis and the foreclosure crisis. Why? Well, because they don't have necessarily the same legal rights as married couples when one or the other decides to stop contributing mm -hmm. to the household. And also their family situation is such that they've created a complication that's not present. For example, we can have a situation where we have John and Jane who have decided to live together. And John has decided, I'm stable, I have the better income, I'll be on the mortgage alone. Just and one name on just that mortgage. One, just one name. And then all of a sudden, the arm hits. He's paying a lot more, and he decides, I've got to do something to save this house, and so he brings in a renter. Jane comes home one day, and all of a sudden, she can't go into the basement anymore because mm -hmm. John has decided to rent the house. Or Jane decides, I'm not going to contribute to the utilities anymore. I'm done. She walks. John has no recourse. John has no ability. He's now bearing the utilities plus the mortgage, something he had not anticipated doing. And this is something you see whether this commitment was over a long period of time or a more recent commitment. If you don't have the responsibilities in the baggage, you can walk. There's, is there anything legal that can be done? There's very little that can be done legally when only one person owns the house. The two of you, when people decide to move in together, that's a decision of the heart. When you decide to buy property together, that mm -hmm. should be a decision of the head. And the two of you can agree in a contract as to how you're going to divide the property if one or the other of you decides to walk. When you have two people who are both on the mortgage and one person has debt that accumulates and they have judgments levied against them, those judgments can be recorded against their interest in the house. Wow. And so now when the house is underwater and they're trying to sell it, someone's going to have to come to the table with money. Kimberly and Catherine both have websites to get good information, and we've provided links to both of them at WUSA9.com under Info to Go.